This lesson number two in Fireworking 101 is going to be about screens. Um, the whole lesson is going to be dedicated to screens, what they are, why we use them, how we use them, and how do we determine which screen to use and what, uh, what specifications a certain screen meets. Um, as you can see, over the years, if you're in this long enough, it's easy to accumulate a pretty wide variety and collection of screens. These are screens you can find at Walmart, Target, uh, kitchen utensil supply stores. I use these screens actually quite a bit for some miscellaneous screening. Um, this screen is a 40 mesh screen. I'll, de I'll describe in a moment what a mesh means. This is good for very quick pulverizing and repowdering of clumpy chemicals. Um, it's a fairly fine mesh screen. When I'm looking for a screen at a kitchen uh, utensils aisle in Walmart or something like that, I'm basically looking for a screen where the screen doesn't come out of the frame easily. This one is actually sort of crimped into this stainless steel frame. This screen, the screen is actually molded into the plastic. If you pick up some screens in the kitchen um, supplies aisle, you'll notice that the screen just pulls out of the frame real easily. Well, that screen is going to get damaged and destroyed pretty quickly with the kind of use we're going to be using it for. This screen is a 16 mesh screen. I use this for, if I'm pumping comets or stars, let's say, and I trim off the excess star and want to regranulate it back into the bucket of composition before I press the next star. This screen, a 16 mesh screen, anywhere from a 12 to a 16 to a 20 works pretty well for granulating a composition back into a bucket. This screen is a 12 mesh screen. I use this, mo this f screen would pull out of the frame fairly easily, but I don't put this to any real hard use. This screen mostly I use to de-dust rice hulls when I'm getting ready to coat rice hulls with black powder. So these are some readily available, uh, locally available kitchen type sieve screens. Uh, in fireworking.com I have a whole article about screens and actually how to make homemade screens by buying some stainless steel screen and framing it in a wood frame. This is a 12 inch by 12 inch screen and I have screens in this um, size in mesh sizes all the way from 4 mesh to 100 mesh. So a 12 by 12 homemade uh, frame screen. When, when we do grab it, graduate to using large screens and large composition quantities, an 18 by 24 inch homemade screen, home frame screen, wood framed, is very easy to use on a couple sheets of paper for screen mixing compositions. So I like this for, and also for breaking up clumped chemicals. This size screen, 18 by 24 wood frame screen, comes in very handy. But for Fireworking 101, for beginner fireworkers, and actually for general use, these mining classification screens uh, are very handy. These screens fit into the mouth of a five gallon bucket just perfectly and snugly. I'll show how that comes in handy uh, a little later in the course. But these are bucket screens, um, mining classification screens. Caleb and I'll list his website in a moment. Caleb stocks and sells these screens. They're pretty inexpensive. The screen is uh, welded, crimped, molded into the frames so the screen does not come out of that frame easily at all. These screens do come with a plastic reinforcing X on the bottom of them. That comes in handy for the miners who are really grinding wet sand and gravel and rocks in these screens for the kind of use we put them to. I take a pair of dikes 
and I just clip out those reinforcing X's uh, so that they don't obscure the screen at all. They don't trap composition, um, either dry or damp composition, between that reinforcing X and the screen. In our use, that reinforcing X is not necessary. Screens are used in lots of different ways in our fireworking processes. Uh, in the next project, the reason I'm making project number two in Fireworking 101, uh, a uh, lesson on screens, is that we're going to use this in the very next lesson. Uh, they will become part of a homemade drying box, which comes in very handy for drying black match, stars, uh, black powder. Um, and so we will use these in the drying box project as part of that project. Breaking up clumps of chemical uh, in a relatively fine mesh screen, say the 20 mesh, um, this is a 20 mesh screen. Breaking up clumps of chemical in a screen uh, is easily done uh, in a screen as opposed to any other way I know of. In lots of our processes, the fineness, the particle size of a chemical is specified. In most of the compositions, the black powder compositions, the fountain and rocket propellant base compositions, that we want our chemical to be very fine. And a 40 or 50 mesh screen is used to ensure that a chemical is fine enough. If all the chemical will pass that screen, I know that it's as fine as I want it to be since I'm going to specify the chemical can pass a 40 or 50 mesh screen. Once we make black powder, we're going to want to classify the grain sizes of the black powder. And let's say that we granulate the black powder when it's damp through an 8 mesh screen. And we want to use anything that will pass an 8 mesh screen, uh, but not pass a 20 mesh screen, let's say. The, we can classify the grain sizes, sift the grain sizes through the 8 mesh screen. We know it will all pass the 8 mesh screen but ensure that it will all sit on the 20 mesh screen so that the grain size is between 8 mesh and 20 mesh. We'll want that kind of a cut of grain sizes when we make some projects using the black powder. We can classify grain sizes using screens, sort the uh, grain sizes. When we dampen our black powder, we can granulate that damp composition through the 8 mesh screen onto paper and screens are used to granulate damp composition. They're also used to screen dampened con composition like we will be using in our gerbs, our fountains, and our rockets, our rocket, motors our rocket motor propellant. We'll dampen the composition and we will work that composition through a 12 or a 20 mesh screen a couple times to distribute the moisture com completely and evenly through the composition. So we will screen the moisture into a composition by putting it through the screen a couple times when it's been dampened. If I am mixing a composition with dry chemicals, putting it through the 20 mesh or the 50 mesh screen a couple times, as I will show being done when we mix composition for fountains, when we mix composition for black match, we mix compositions very thoroughly and homogeneously by putting it through a screen. In some processes, actual cutting of stars um, is done through a screen. Screen sliced stars are bound with parlon and acetone, so they're sort of a soft rubbery composition when they're damp. We make a patty and we force that patty through, say, this four mesh screen and we create quarter inch by quarter inch stars using the screen slicing method. So screens can be used to actually slice stars. I mentioned using the screens in the drying chamber, drying box. If we put, say, a, a, a paper lining in here or a, a, a chinette paper plate with some black powder on it, we can dry compositions, granulated compositions, sitting on a screen so they can be used as a drying screen. Um, 
And finally, when we do get to ball milling, we can use uh, such a screen to separate the ball milling media from the material that we have ball milled. So it can be used as a media separation screen. We won't be doing ball milling in Fireworking 101, but as we get to each operation in the course of Fireworking 101, I'll describe how, it, how a screen is used and a specific mesh size of screen is used in a particular way at each step of the course and in the process that we are practicing in that lesson. I mentioned mesh size of a screen. This is a four mesh screen. Um, screens are classified by their mesh size. I've got a four mesh screen, I've got an eight mesh screen, I've got a 12 mesh screen, a 20 mesh screen, and a 50 mesh screen. What that means, for example, this four mesh screen, in one inch there are four wires running in the one direction. If I, I won't count the very first wire because I am going to count the last wire, but in one inch here, one, two, three, four wires are in there. So that's called a four mesh screen. In one square, and that creates four divisions in the inch running that direction. In the other direction, there is also there are also four wires running in the other direction, so this is called a four by four mesh or just a four mesh screen. So in one square inch, one inch by one inch, there are actually 16 openings, four by four. There are 16 openings in one square inch in a four mesh screen. The openings, now naturally there's a wire on center every one quarter inch in a four mesh screen but because of the wire thickness the actual openings are a little less than one quarter inch. In this case the wire thickness is 0 0.05 inch and the opening is 0.25 inches, one quarter inch, minus that 0 0.05 inch. The opening size is 0.2 inch. So the on center dimension of the wires is one quarter inch in a four mesh screen. The wire thickness is 0 0.05 and that can vary a little bit from screen to screen. The opening size is 0.2 inches. So that's how we classify a screen by mesh size. In practice, uh, the largest screen I typically, largest mesh screen, largest opening in a screen I use is a four mesh screen typically. Um, although I do have a three mesh and a two mesh screen that can be used for screen slicing larger stars. In practice, usually the four mesh screen is the largest I'll use. That's a four mesh screen. This is an eight mesh screen, which means there's a wire every eighth inch in this screen. This is a 12 mesh screen. There's, a wire, there's 12 wires per inch, 12 by 12, 144 openings per square inch. This is a 20 mesh screen, 20 wires running in each direction per inch. And this is a 50 mesh screen. This is about the finest screen I will use typically in my, in my projects. For Fireworking 101, um, I would recommend it's not a bad idea to get this complete set. The screens are relatively inexpensive and they come in very handy. A uh, 4 mesh, an 8 mesh, a 12 mesh, a 20 mesh, and a 50 mesh. Uh, we will use all those uh, in our fireworking uh, projects in general. For the course specifically, if you just wanted to get the bare minimum, I'd recommend getting an 8 mesh, a 12, or a 20 mesh, probably preferably a 12. Uh, so an 8, a 12, and a 50 mesh. The 50 mesh will be used a lot um, in terms of mixing compositions and make sure, making sure a chemical is fine enough to use in our, uh, in our project that day. And the 12 and 8 mesh will be used for granulating compositions and incorporating moisture into compositions.
when we are screen sorting uh, particles, um, we classify the particles that have been screen sorted between two screens in a particular way. Um, for our black powder, when we get to that, we're going to be uh, making sure all of the powder passes an 8 mesh screen. That would be called minus 8 mesh. If, it, if all of the grain size of the black powder passes an 8 mesh screen, that's called minus 8 mesh. If it um, passes, if it sits then on a 20 mesh screen, that would be plus 20 mesh. Anything that passes the 20 mesh is minus 20. Anything that will sit on the 20 mesh screen and not pass this screen is called plus 20. So if, if I sort my black powder in between these two screens, I make sure everything passes the 8 mesh, that's minus 8 mesh. And if I make sure it sits on the 20 mesh, that's plus 20 mesh. And I will specify at one point when we're using black powder we've, we've made and dried black powder, I'll specify a certain mesh cut, minus 8 plus 20, or minus 8 plus 12. Um, and, and I'll typically probably specify minus 8 plus 12. That's a fairly coarse black powder without any real fine stuff. The fine stuff that will pass the 20 mesh we'll use, or the 12 mesh, we'll use in a different project. So that's how we specify particle sizes. Uh, at one point we'll be specifying minus 20 plus 50 charcoal. Often that's, that will be called like a 36 mesh or a 30 mesh charcoal or a 24 mesh charcoal. Um, coarser charcoal is classified through the finer screens. If I want a minus 20 plus 50 uh, more coarse charcoal, in a composition that will be specified that way. So when you see charcoal sold as a 20 mesh charcoal, a 36 mesh charcoal, an 80 mesh charcoal, you know that the particle sizes are about the, the particle size that would just pass that screen size. An 80 mesh charcoal will just pass an 80 mesh screen won't have too much finer stuff in it and won't have any more coarse stuff in it than that 80 mesh screen. So the 50 mesh screen we'll be using to ensure that a chemical is fine enough to use in the composition we're making and we will also use to sift the composition together to make it sure it is completely and homogeneously mixed. The 20 or 12 mesh, and I'll probably prefer a, a 12 mesh in general, um, the uh, 20 and 12 mesh screens are good for incorporating moisture into a composition. The 8 mesh is good for granulating a composition to a, med a damp composition like black powder to a medium mesh size, a, a minus 8 mesh. And then if and when we get to uh, screen granulating and sorting a larger black powder size, the 4 mesh comes in handy. When I'm done using a screen for either screen granulating a wet composition or sifting together a dry composition or incorporating the moisture into a slightly dampened composition, I'll just simply take this outside and hose them out and over a place where it's safe to have some black powder or fertilizer or potassium nitrate um, on the, in the ground. Uh, just hosing these out is a quick and easy way to clean them out. So that's a quick overview of screens. Uh, as part of the project, I'd highly recommend specifically getting this assortment of five mesh sizes of bucket screens, or at least the uh, eight mesh, 12 mesh, and 50 mesh screens um, to use specifically in the various projects we'll be making.